Friday at Pizza Flicks. Fasten your seatbelts for the sound and the fury of one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite racing films. The action takes place during the 1959 Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway, nicknamed the track Too Tough to Tame by many NASCAR drivers. It stars heartthrob Rory Calhoun, a pre-Gilligan Alan Hale Jr., and Mr. Ed's Connie Haynes in her first and last movie. Cooper picks up another lap. This man is driving a fantastic race. If Cooper can hold his pace, he's set. He's got this afternoon's exciting race in his pocket. Yes, sir, folks, it looks like Cooper is finally going to break that heavy load of bad luck, dogging him since he won the Southern 500 three years ago.
Hi there. Got some troubles? Yeah, sort of. Uh, where will I find Ben Williams? Oh, I'm afraid you won't. Old Ben died about three years back. Oh. Well, I'm real sorry to hear that. Yeah, I took over the place. Can I help you, though? Well, you know, I... I used to work right here for old Ben, help him out. As a matter of fact, you might say that I lived right here. Looks like uh, Ben expanded the place quite a bit. No, I did most of that. Hey, what can I do for you? Oh, nothing much, I guess. Well, wait a minute. What'd you come out here for? Well, I told you to see Ben Williams. Why? What about? Well, I don't know. Uh, man gets a little broke. Uh, stomach gets a little empty. He gets a little lonesome, so he comes crawling home. Now, I, uh, I was born back up there in those hills. As a matter of fact, I uh, built my first car right here. Out of old junk heaps that uh, Ben used to buy up for salvage. Boy, that first car really had scorch. Yeah, I bet. Well, listen, I got... You know, I had a real ball driving these hills. As a matter of fact, that's, uh, that's where I learned how to race. I uh, was running moonshine from the revenues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a ball. Real ball. Well, boy, I'll be seeing you. Hey, wait a minute. That yours? Yeah, what's left of it. How many horses? 230. Mitch Cooper. Didn't I read you got clobbered in some race? Yeah, both of us. Wow, what a mess. Honey, come here for a minute, would you? My wife. Meet Mitch Cooper. He won the Southern 500 three years ago, right? Right. So? So he's used to pushing around some of the hottest iron in auto racing. I've watched you win quite a few races, Mr. Cooper. Well, this is one you didn't see me win. Well, I guess you can't win them all. Where are you heading? Well, that's a good question. I uh, was going to come down here and get a job with old Ben till my leg got well enough to drive again. So you're broke, too. That's right, lady. Don't I look it? Yeah, you look it. Say, uh, I could use some help around the garage. Why don't you give me a hand? I can afford it now the way things are going. Maybe in our spare time we could even fix up your wreck. I got every tool you ever heard of. You can even stay with us for a while if you want to. Where we put him? Well, what about that storeroom in the garage? Put a cot in there. How about it, Mr. Cooper? Best offer I've had today. My name's Les York. This is my wife, Rini. Yeah. Uh, tell you what, why don't you two get acquainted? I promised this guy I'd have his car ready by 5 o'clock. Then we can all sit down and have some dinner, huh? Sure, Les. You know, this is a nice little place. Ben used to make a good living here. We do too, Mr. Cooper. Why don't you just call me Mitch? Because somehow I just don't think we're going to get to know each other that well. Well, if it's going to cause any trouble. It won't. If you need more hangers. Thanks. Mighty fine meal tonight. Glad you liked it. First home cooking I've had in a long time. I wouldn't want them to get cold. We'd better tuck them in good for tonight. Good night, Mr. Cooper. Like I said, just call me Mitch. Good night. Same to you. Hey, Mitch. Hand me the 5-8 soccer, will you? Thank you. What do you figure on doing with your car now that we almost got it ready? Sell it. Well, 
What made you decide that? Well, I'm going to have my leg in a cast for a while yet. A racing car is no good without a driver. You know, I could drive it for you. <laughs> I've done a lot of hot rodding, drag strip stuff. It's pretty good, too. Yeah. Listen, Mitch, I know what makes an engine tick. I can tear them down and put them together blindfold. Yeah, but that doesn't make a driver. A lot of drivers can't even change a tire. Yeah, I guess that's true. We could go partners. Split everything, 50-50, right down the line. Look, forget it. You got a good business here, you're making money, you got a pretty wife, forget it. Oh, that's something else. Mitch, I always wanted to try my hand at auto racing. You could be my chance. Look, I said forget it. Well, just tell me, why not? All right, I'll tell you why. 10,000 guys oh, want to be drivers, I know. see? Sure. And maybe one, just one's going to make it. You don't just get into a car and start driving. You're either born with it or you're not. Or maybe you don't know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. And I think I've got it. Otherwise... Otherwise, you'll spend the rest of your life winding up in seventh place. You got to have ability, natural ability. Well, how do you know I haven't got it? You think you've got it? Yeah, I think I've got it. All right, we'll just see if you got it. We got to check that car out anyhow. Good, it's almost ready. I'll pick up the clutch this afternoon, put it in tonight. Well, uh, just don't uh, make all the noise in the world. I got to get my beauty rest. <laughs> yeah, you sure do, Mitch. Hey, you know, uh, a little of that fresh mountain air might not hurt either one of us. <laughs> Coming out of the straightaway on a track, you hit the turn high and on the outside, and don't drift. You drift on a turn with all that traffic behind you and you wind up in somebody's lap. So you say to yourself, in slow and out fast. In slow and out fast. Yeah, you pick your groove and you stay with it. Let's go for a ride. What about the safety belt? in the total of my car. Say, you're all right. We got company. Mind if I keep ahead of them? Think you can? I can sure try. Let's go.
Illinois stomp on it. They're closing the gap. <laughs> nice stop. Get out. Any trouble, sir? Mitch Cooper. Hiya, Roy. I've been looking for you for a long time. Search the car. I mean, search it. Okay. Wait a minute. What for? I'm just taking a ride with my friend. I was teaching him how to drive. Get out, both of you. All right. You say so, Roy. Don't know what you expect to find, though. Hmm. What happened? Oh, I, I mashed my ankle real bad. Sorry, so sorry. Thanks for false flow board. Yes, sir. No man has ever caused me more sleepless nights than you have, Cooper. Well, why? Because I used to like to drive around these mountains late at night? You know what I mean. He's clean, sir. Can't be. Search for dummy gas tank. OK, sir. Hey, you know, Les, Roy here would have made a good driver on the circuit. How come you never turned your talents to race driving? Keep talking, big boy. You get used to the sound of your own voice when they turn the key on you. Not a thing. Can't be. No dummy gas tanks, no false floorboard, nothing? Not a thing. Hey, just a minute. You didn't stop me because you thought I was running shine, did you? Oh, get out of here, both of now, you. Now, wait a minute, Roy. You know I wouldn't break the law. I'll get you yet. Get out. Hi, honey. And what are you doing up? Worrying about you. Big boy like me? I went to the bank today, Les. The money's been going out. I, uh... I meant to tell you about that, honey. Uh, Make it good, Les. Well, I, uh... sort of loaned the money to Mitch. That was charitable of you. Oh, you don't understand, honey. You needed to buy uh, new parts for the car. And what are we, the finance company? Really, honey, I don't know what you got against this guy. He doesn't mean any harm. He's working very hard. In fact, he's the one doing me the favor. He's teaching me how to drive. What I'm trying to say is, honey, I'm racing Mitch's car. We're going to split the purse. And what about the coffin when you go and get yourself killed? Is Mitch going to split the purse on that, too? Oh, come on, honey. Don't you know you're married to one of the indestructible Iron Men? Besides, I love you too much to go out and get myself killed. Hey, Mitch! Hi, buddy boy. Hiya, Mitch. How you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> hey, how's the leg? Well, it's okay. You still making music for Reichert? Oh, sure. You know, coffee and cake money. You never drank coffee in your life. Not so loud. <laughs> well, it's good to see you back in business again. But you're not going to drive with that ankle, are you? No, Les is. Oh, Les York, Buddy Schaefer. Glad to meet you, Hello. buddy. Sorry, I, uh... It's all right. I've been flying a long time with one wing. <laughs> well, let's see how she checks out. Number eight. You're not still driving with that number. Why not? Why not, the man wants to know. 
Less is what we call an upside down number. It reads the same both ways. That's the kind of number I was driving with when I got this. Number 66. Quite a raise. Well, you remember, Mitch. Yeah. It was out of Daytona. There I was having myself a ball. Way out in the front and only two laps from home. And all of a sudden, this light-headed character running in the groove decides to pit. Saws me off, and with the door closed, I got nowhere to go. Well, you remember, Mitch. Yeah. Well, I want to tell you, right then and there, I started the biggest collection of iron this side of a war surplus junkyard. Man, those cars were all over the place. And did those goats kick, and me right under one of them. <laughs> it was quite a sight, wasn't it, Mitch? Yeah. <laughs> Unless you won't believe this, when that crash wagon got out there, they had to use a torch to cut me out. And that guy must have been real nervous, because the flame took all the whiskers off my face. <laughs> Saved me a shave, though. Because was I ever lucky. That night I had a date with a real honey bun. Ah, yes. Quite a race to remember. Huh, Mitch? Yeah. I'll tell you one thing, Les. You got a man with you. Good luck. Thanks, buddy. Well, you two, I better be getting back before Riker starts blowing his motors. <laughs> oh, one thing. You better shock her down stiff on this track. Okay, buddy. See you two. He's quite a boy. Who's Riker? He's a big man, industrialist. His hobby's racing. He buys cars, drivers, crews, anything, anybody will help him win a trophy. I think he'd rather win a trophy than be on a deserted island with a beautiful woman. Teach his own. <laughs> I think I'd take the island. Yeah, me too. See if you can give him a run for that trophy, huh? What do you mean, run? I'm taking that trophy home to Rini. You stay between the fences. This boy, Les York, is driving a beautiful race his first time out, and little wonder, with Mitch Cooper, the man behind the man behind the wheel. York is green, but he's not a back-off guy. He goes in and out of a corner just like the master Mitch Cooper. He's in trouble! No, 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 but he's coming out of it. Hold it, hold it. Well, how do you like that? Came right out of that spin, and he's still going. Well, that cost him five positions, but he's fighting his way right back up there. Believe me, you're going to hear a lot more about Les York. This boy's got lead in his foot and brains in his head. I almost won second, Congratulations. but... Congratulations. You smell it. 160 bucks. Of course, I know it hasn't got the rich, ripe, full smell of green that first place has. But you'll smell that, too, someday. Meaning what? Meaning, uh... I'm going to quit the garage. From now on, I'm racing. Full time. Is this your idea, or Mitch Cooper's? Honey, I'm going to be big. I know I can. I know from the way I drove today. Well, Mitch says I've got it. Les, this isn't the way we planned it. And I don't like it. Can't you see, honey? This is my big chance. I don't want to be a grease monkey for the rest of my life. That's not for me, and I don't want it. You don't want it? Well, maybe you want to end up like Mitch Cooper.
Why did you do it to him? You didn't have to let him. Look, why all me? Less his idea. You could make him give it up. Give it up? He's just starting. And he's plenty good at it, too. You know, if somebody gets into something like that, they don't just give it up. Unless it's a big boy and he's old enough to get a license. You know what I mean. It's your car. Yeah, well, he's my partner. I can't stop him. Then I'll say it this way. I don't want us going broke, crawling from track to track, living out of the back end of a station wagon, not knowing from one day to the next whether or not my husband's going to be driven off to the hospital or to a cemetery. Well, maybe it won't happen to Les. What do you want to happen to him? Look, lady, drivers are born, not made. Les has got it. All right. I'll put it to you different. I had to scrounge for everything I ever got. Well, who didn't? I got my education slinging hash at a diner where truckers drove through. I had to listen to all the small talk, sweet talk, bed talk. Then Les came along. And he made me feel like I was something special. And I fell in love with him. I married him. And I still love him, Mr. Cooper. And I'd go back to slinging hash if I thought it would help him. I'd listen to the same small talk, sweet talk, bed talk. Only this time it'd be different because I was married to Les. And I want to stay married and have a live, whole husband. You know, everybody has to have something. But Les is racing, and he's got it. Right in the palm of his hand. See, some things get in a man's blood. Like a woman. Our poison. All right. So it's no go. Only I'll tell you something, mister. I'm going to go along with Les. I'm going to follow him from track to track. And I'm going to make sure that poison doesn't kill him. Like maybe it's killed you. Gonna give us a run this race, Les? Well, I don't plan on towing your friend my slipstream. Hey, listen to this guy. Thinks you can win the race. That's right. Good Good see, see you. See you, Hello. boys. Oh, you're beginning to talk like a big man, Les. Hope you don't get too big for your helmet. You just keep the iron hot. I'll do the driving. Come on, let's unhook it. Look, Higgins, I said close the hood. I mean it. Get the car ready for the track. Come on, knock it off, Tommy. 
You couldn't drive a kiddie car in your condition. Go on home. You go to hell. Come on, boys. You just try and stop me. Tommy! Oh. Drop it, Tommy! Tommy, go on back to the hotel. Have Myrtle fix you some black coffee and get some sleep, huh? Shorty, drive him over to the motel, will you? Go on, Tommy. What happened to his face? Ran off a racetrack once. Had a little fire. Say, I didn't mean to chew back at you. Well, I did. Hey, Mitch. Hi, Joe. There was a girl around a while ago, seemed powerful anxious to see you. Well, I'm powerful anxious to see her, too. Thanks, Joe. Say, uh, would you mind looking after the store? I got a little unfinished business to attend to. You'll have to bear with us, but it'll be a little while before your room is made up, Mrs. York. The people just vacated. But if there's anything I can get you in the meantime... No, thanks. I'll just sit and wait. Hi, my name's Kay Hill. Hello, I'm Rena York. I know these all-night rides to a racetrack. Why don't you wait in my place? A nice, cool shower. Oh, heaven. <laughs> Come on, it's this way. Have you seen Tommy? Oh, no, I haven't, Myrtle. Well, he's been gone all night. And he hasn't been off that bottle. I'm so sick inside I could die. Now, stop your worrying. Tommy can take care of himself, all right. He always does. There he is. Tommy? You get used to it after a while. Do you? Is your husband a driver, too? Oh, no. No husband. Married to a car instead. I own it. If they ever change the rules about women driving, I'll probably get behind the wheel myself. Well, here we are. Just make yourself at home. Thanks. Your husband drives Mitch Cooper's car, doesn't he? Yes. He and Les rebuilt it. He's been living with us. Kind of fun to have around the house, isn't he? I mean, you find him easy to get along with. How do you happen to know him? He used to drive for me. A woman, a race. Mitch took them as they came. Meaning what? Meaning nothing. Meaning maybe I hope you're in love with your husband. I'm in love with him. But thanks for the warning and the advice. Just thought I'd pass the word. Only, don't ever let Mitch nick your skin. He's got a way of getting under it. And it isn't easy getting him out.
Aren't you in the wrong place? No, but you are. I mean, uh, how did you get here? I was invited. Now, don't go believing all those stories that Kay told you about me. Outside, mister. Look, I just came in here to see an old friend. I didn't know you were here. Are you gonna go or do I have to yell? Hey, you know, you look cute in that thing. I like it even better than that car coat. I guess I yell. I didn't know you were here. Honest. He's a boy to beat. Looks like Riker bought himself a bargain this time. Little Junior's gonna have a good position when the starter drops a flag. It's all foot and no brains. Might make a good driver someday. If he lives. Maybe. But that's still not winning the race. All right, you guys, lock it up. I'm going out there. Not yet. Huh? See those clouds up there? Yeah. Well, in a couple hours, this track's going to cool off. Smooth your carburation out. Might pick up an extra mile an hour. So we'll wait till the last minute. Let them burn their tires up on the track. We'll stick better. Nice driving, Thorson. Thank you, Mr. Rackard. Take the car over the inspection area, kid. I'll make the arrangements. How did tires hold up, boys? Hey, uh, you know, that Riker doesn't seem like such a bad guy. He's not such a bad guy. Well, it depends on what price tag you put on your soul. Now, what'd you do that for? Don't you ever let me catch you eating those things around here again. But, well, Mr. Cooper, what did I do wrong? Look, Stooge, you just don't eat peanuts in the pits. But I like peanuts, Mr. Cooper. I always eat them, ever since I was a kid. The next time I catch you eating those things around here, I'll ram them down your throat, peanut shells and all. Now, don't you forget it. Hey, Stoogie. Mr. Schaefer, <laughs> what's wrong with eating peanuts? Oh, nothing. At a circus or in a saloon. Once upon a time, there was a stoogie who worked at the tracks. He used to eat peanuts. He used to love peanuts more than, well, he used to eat them by the bag full. He had them for breakfast, he had them for lunch, he had them for dinner. And one race, there was an eight car pileup. And four of the drivers got bent up all the way. And you know what they found? In four of the cars, there were peanut shells. And you know what else? From that race on, Peanuts has been the kiss of death. You understand? Ladies and gentlemen, the next driver out for his qualifying runs this afternoon. From Kokomo, Indiana, driving the 1957 Ford number 91, Tommy Webb. Say, Tommy, when you want to play? One lap? Say, are you okay? the starting line in a veritable storm of dust and barrels the automobile into the first turn. 
It's a milk run. He's only going around the track, Merrick, alone. He's got it all to himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Tommy Webb, driving this 57 Ford number 91, is one of the real old pros in this stock car racing business. Always a tough competitor, always a driver and a car to watch. Keep your eyes on him here today during these qualifying runs. And on race day, watch that car number 91 driven by the old pro Tommy Webb. Tommy Webb bows that automobile off the fourth turn, down the straightaway, this time for the green starter's flag, and he's on his official qualifying run. He moves into the first turn, high up against the guardrail. Handling very nicely indeed as he goes out of the first into the second turn. Really barely rolling an automobile now. Send the ambulance in the car, so come on the back stretch, please. Go now. Not yet. What do you mean, not yet? Now! Don't you understand? Okay, kid. Your attention in the pit area, please. Cotton Owens, you have a long distance phone call at the booth to the rear of the pagoda. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the next driver out for his time trial here today. This is the young driver, Les York, driving the Mitch Cooper car number eight, the 1957 Chevrolet. This young driver has won so many dirt track races this year that Mitch Cooper, the old pro, feels that he is now ready for the big one. He's out on the starting line now, ready to start his official time trial. Another new record. York just bet at Dawson's mark, setting up 30 minutes ago with that first lap at 40.09 seconds. And he's still on it, and that second lap is faster yet. 40.07 seconds, and that's 121.622 miles per hour. Hang on, ladies and gentlemen, it's a fast one. Les York in car number eight enters the fourth turn. gentlemen, something's wrong. The boat is cutting out. He's drifting through the fourth turn slowly. Now heading into his pit area, and Mitch Cooper has walked out and opened to the track, awaiting the arrival of the car to determine what happened. What happened? Oh, the motor quit. All the guts went out of it. Take it easy, kid. We'll fix it. Well, I remember when everyone was pig happy. All them hot shots wanted those big irons with lots of horses under the hood. I told them they was all clear crazy. You remember, Buck? I sure do, buddy. <laughs> so Mitch Cooper comes along and bets me a century that he'd have 20 laps of me at the finish of the 500. Well, I just love that. So you know what I did? Tell us, buddy, honey. You only will anyway. Well, thank you, Peaches. <laughs> Well, I went out and I bought one of them real six sixes on the market. The slowest dog I could find to run against them big dogs. And away we went. Tell us what happened then, buddy, honey. I, you only will anyway. I was hoping you'd ask. Well, I pulled in second place and had all 35 of them tired dogs behind me. Why, buddy, honey, you're just marvelous. <laughs> you're leaving out the best part. I got to tell them when they pulled that motor for inspection, all the cylinders were bored out so big you could stick your head in each one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now, Mitch. You know I never spoil a good story for the sake of a little truth. <laughs> Honey, would you mind filling my radiator? <laughs> hey, 
How about a hand? Hello. Hi. I'm Eve. I hope your name is Adam. And I'll let you fix me a drink. The bar's over there. Who is that? The name's Eve Mason. Three years ago, her husband spun out and died. She's been trying to forget ever since. Well, she doesn't have to forget with my husband. Not just less, honey. It's any man, any husband. But I'm not just any wife. I never drank whiskey straight. Want me to talk to him? You're the one who said it, Mitch. He's a big boy. He can take care of himself. <laughs> Let me help you catch your breath. How about another? Kiss? Drink, silly. Well, like you said, he's a big boy. <laughs> it's his hangover. But I'm coming back if I go ten thousand miles. Look away, look away, look away. you to meet Evie. Evie, this is Reenie. And meet Mitch Cooper. He's the greatest We've guy. Been. We've met. You need a license for hunting, darling. It's a big jungle, dear. They roam around wild. What do you expect? Mine's fairly tame. And if I ever told you how I tamed him, you'd turn yours in for a new model. I think it'd be sweet, Les, dear, if you fix me another drink. Go ahead, fix it. And fix one for yourself. For the road. A cup of coffee? No, thanks. I'll smoke this one out. You, uh, get Les to bed all right? Yes. Not a bad party, huh? Wonderful, wasn't it? All right, so Les got a little drunk. 
Sure. And little Eve had it all set up to be Dolliday. With less is a big bargain on sale. Everything but the fig leaf. Don't be bitter. A lot of people have something to get lonesome for in this world. Is that a personal observation? Well, I've had my share of things to be lonesome for. Like what? Well, racing's all I know. I like the smell, the speed, the noise. I don't know. What about the funerals? Well, I didn't expect you to understand. Mr. Cooper, I don't. It's kind of hard to explain. Get you in your blood, the money, the glory. I like all of it. The women? Well, there's only one kind I never had. I was a woman like you. Someone to follow me around. Be with me for me. Less is lucky. Well, good night. Take her around for a few laps, kid. Profile those tires. Start practicing pulling those inspection doors, just to check. I win this race, even on rims. You just keep practicing on those inspection doors and checking those tires, you'll come across that finish line on a hearse. You ever hear that drinking and driving don't mix? <laughs> hey, Mitch, let's see you a minute. Sure, you go on, take your head with you. <laughs> I was wondering, uh, could I float a small loan? What's the matter? Doesn't Reichert pay off? Well, sure, but it, well, somehow it just seems to melt away. <laughs> yeah, like ice in a glass. Oh, I'll pay you back. You know I always keep a record. Yeah, I know. Thanks, Mitch. Pins inside there. <laughs> okay. Hey, you know, you... You kind of sort of changed. Now, it could be my imagination. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Well, it's just striking me that, as I remember you, there was only one thing that ever kept you moving around one place for any length of time. Of course, sometimes it was two women, but... <laughs> you know, you got a real smart way with engines, buddy boy. Why don't you stick with them? Pretty good. Yeah? Not today, I'm not. I've been watching you. Anytime you want to drive for me. Then what, Riker? Live, breathe, and die for Riker? Or bring the trophy home? I'm a liberal man, Cooper. Yeah, I know you are. You tried to be liberal with me once. You put up the money all right, but you take away the man. Why don't you try using robots for drivers? <laughs> uh, I'm giving a little party. You might call it a pre-celebration for my team and cars winning. I just stopped over to invite you two. Hope you can come. Thanks, Mr. Reichert. Yeah, thanks. So I still say, what's wrong with Reichert? His money talks big, pays his driver's top salary, even lets him keep the purse, all of it. You know, Les, I think you're counting dollar signs instead of sheep when you go to bed nights.
Thorson, you're fired. But, Mr. Reichert, I couldn't help it. The engine just blew. And your brains are lead, too. You made yourself a good starting position, so now you burn the car out. Just at its peak. Now I've got to start over again with a new engine. Please, Mr. Reichert, let me drive the race. If I win, don't pay me. Keep the purse. You're fired. Still think Reichert's a great white father? Hey, a new motor costs 1,500 bucks, you know. That's like a 10 cent cigar to Reichert. He's got a dozen motors in that van over there, all set up. See, the kid hurt Reichert's pride. That's worse than blowing 10 motors. You know, Mitch, the more you talk, the more you're beginning to sound like you're turning into a real do-gooder. Thanks for the ride. Maybe I'll see you later. Yeah, maybe. Hi, honey. Hi. Oh, boy, that cold shower is going to feel good. How'd it go today? OK. I must be getting pretty good. One of the big boys offered me a job today. Driving. Of course. Why don't you take me someplace tonight? We could go to a movie or just take a nice long walk. Well, we are going someplace tonight, all right. Mr. Reichert, this guy that offered me the job today, well, he's giving a pre-race party and he asked me to come. Did you get my slacks back from the cleaners, honey? Yes. Last. I don't want to go to that party. Just a lot of strange people I don't know, and you just sit around and talk about racing. Can't we just spend the evening together tonight, alone? There's a good movie. Or oh, we could just sit around here and watch TV. Honey, well, you don't understand. Mr. Reichert's an awful big guy in auto racing. And if he invites you to go someplace, well, you just can't ignore him. Are you going to quit Mitch and drive for him? No, of course not. But when Mitch's ankle's all healed, well, I might want to drive for Reichard. But that's some other time. And I'm here now, tonight. And I want to be with you, alone. Look, suppose I just go for a little while, just long enough to say hello, then I'll come right back home. I suppose Eve's going to be there, too. Well, how do I know? I didn't see any list of invitations. Ah, oh, come on, honey. Get yourself all prettied up. We'll have a good time. I'm sure you will. You'll have a good time. But it won't be with me. Why don't you lay off? I told you this was business, and I've got to go. Well, go ahead and go. And have yourself a real ball. Because I'm going to that party, too. But it won't be with you. Well, that's fine. That's just fine. You know, we're very much alike, you and me. I mean, I. How's that? Oh, you don't have any home to go home to, and you want to go home. And... I don't have any home to go. Why all this talk about going home? We're to swell party, plenty of booze. And you look very pretty tonight. You didn't understand. Nobody understands. Bartender. Now just slow down. You won't last the night. Let's walk around for a little while. Come on. Costs about $10,000 to put one of those cars on a track, Les. And I got five of them. Just in case one of them isn't running exactly right. It's a lot of loot. My boy qualified for a front position before he blew up that motor. 
You could drive for me if you want to, Les. You'd be so hot, they'd choke on the smell of your rubber. Well, I, uh, afraid I can't, Mr. Riker. If you see, Mitch and I will. I know. Loyal. I admire a man who's loyal. But I also admire a man who knows what's best for himself. That's my department. Excuse me, honey. Excuse us. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Riker. Sweeten this, will you, please? You do like me, don't you? And I like him, too, honey. Bartender? Bourbon and water, please. Now, who's going to have him like whom? You did say this was a big jungle, didn't you, honey? You might not be able to tell it by my sweet, gentle looks. But I'm a real cat when it comes to my tiger. And I have news for you, honey. I don't share him with anybody, including you. Why, you! Why don't you go change your makeup, Eve? Go on. Take me back, Les. What'd you have to do that for? Why don't you take her home, Les? I don't need you to tell me what to do. I'll go if I want to, or I'll stay. Then stay! Take me back, Mitch. One big, happy family. Not if he lets Mitch Cooper play big brother to his wife. Your wife does a pretty good job once she gets started. Well, that wasn't like her at all. She's not used to drinking. Did you two have a family quarrel or something? I noticed she came here with Mitch. It wasn't much. Something she just doesn't understand, that's all. Well, maybe Mitch will get everything straightened out. He's got such an understanding nature. Look, honey, your wife had quite a few drinks. And I don't think Uncle Mitch was the ideal escort home. You know what I mean. Yeah, thanks. Wait a minute. You two make a real handsome couple, don't you? What do you mean by that? We go partners. 50-50. Well, that didn't include my wife. Les, you're all wrong. Am I? Stay out of this. From now on, you better stay out of my life. And hers. Look, I don't know what you're thinking. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you and I are through. As of tomorrow, I'm driving for Riker. Well, what about the race? What about my car? You can take the race and your car and go to hell. Or drive it yourself if you've got enough guts. Come on, you. Hi, Mitch. Any chance you might be looking for a ride home? Well, uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I am looking for a ride home. Good to see you, Kate. I'll be back in a few minutes. Where are you going? Well, Cooper's got trouble. I think I know how to fix it. He never was any good at fixing them cars, but he sure knows how to drive them. Well, you're working for me, not Cooper. 
The boy's in trouble. He's got to qualify this afternoon. It'll only take a few minutes. Well, I'm not paying you to work on cars that are racing against me. If he can't fix it, that's his tough luck. Well, Mr. Reichert, you can't expect me to stand around when a guy's in trouble. Well, don't just stand around. Get busy on my car. Or get fired. Thanks, Mr. Reichert, for helping me make up my mind. I'll see you around the pits. Cooper. I don't know. You got a spot on your crew for a one-armed tool slinger? Well, don't stand there staring sad-eyed. You heard it missing. If you're gonna do something about it, get going. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our time trials for this 10th annual Southern 500. Attention in the pit area, please. Will you drivers and pit crews drive your cars down to the inspection area so that they may be impounded until race morning? Something, Mr. Cooper? You never drive a track, boy, without walking it. Smelling out every inch. Checking the weak spots. But you know this track like your own skin, Mr. Cooper. Tracks change, boy. Just like people. Don't you ever forget that. Hey, Les. Between the fences, kid. God, a great event is about to take place here today. There will be danger here today, O oh Lord, and we who sit and watch these young men act out this great clean sport, pray that you will watch over them. 
and protect them. And although there will be 50 of these young men waging a fearsome battle across the vast stage, there can only be one winner. But we do pray, dear God, that you will grant each loser his life, that he may try again for victory some other day. Amen. Attention all race car drivers, gentlemen, go to your cars, please. Attention all race car drivers, go to your cars, please. Gentlemen, start your engines. Stand up, ladies and gentlemen, and cheer them on the way. This is the pace lap. Curtis Turner, driver of the beautiful old space car, one of the Southern 500 here in 1956, and Rebel 300 winner in 1958, has his passengers Bob Calvin, president of the Darlington Raceway, and the beautiful Miss Carolyn Melton, this year's Miss Southern 500. 50 of the nation's top drivers make up the field here today, and 50 of the nation's fastest cars painted in all the colors of the rainbow. Fast Southern 500 winners, Bob R. Roberts, Buck Baker, Speedy Thompson, and Mitch Cooper are matched against the field of interest that includes newcomers Bob Burdick, Johnny Lawler, Buddy Baker, Les York, and the father and son team, three-time Grand National Champion Lee Penny and his son Richard. Seventeen Chevys, sixteen Fords, eight Keybirds, three Pontiacs, three Plumbers, two Oldsmobiles, and one Buick make up the starting field here today. And they move on towards the starting line in the green flag that will get the Southern 500 underway. history and off the second turn down the back stretch is Bob R. Roberts in Pontiac number three, Speedy Thompson in Impala number 22, Elmo Langley in Buick number 10, Rex White in Impala number four and Bob Burdick in T-Bird number 73. Check car number eight, driven by the old veteran Mitch Cooper. He's making his bid early in this race to place his car in contention.
Cooper is driving a magnificent race so far, consistently moving up through that traffic. At lap 50, it's Les York in the lead in the 59 Olds, number 25. In second place is Joe Eubanks in 58 Ford, number 82. Running flat out, passes Tanner and Carson on the inside. Cooper now running in fourth spot is very much in contention. Keep your eyes on that number eight automobile. Little boys don't drive, Darlington kid. There goes a man. Give him a position. still out front, but all these boys had better watch out for Mitch Cooper. It's the old master out to get the pupil that he taught to drive. And the pressure is beginning to worry York. Come in. Oh, sorry, ma'am. It's all right. Go ahead. You must have a man at the race. Yes. Yeah, I've been cleaning these rooms a long time. You get to know. temperature at this time is a blistering 132 degrees. Those tires are taking a terrific beating on this track today, and so are the drivers. For your information, ladies and gentlemen, those race cars aren't air-conditioned. Cooper makes his bid. Look at that number eight go. He gets around Langdon and Eubanks to grab the number two spot. Man, this is going to be a race. Some roomy looking faces in the rank of pit along about now, and the pressure mounts. <laughs> How about that, It's Les York in number 25 in first place. Mitch Cooper in number 8 second. Joe Eubanks in 82 third. Shep Langdon in 64 fourth. And Joe Weatherman in number 12 fifth. Slipstream. Way to get York's rear bumper, forcing York to literally tow him through these turns. I'll bet that's a little trick that Mitch didn't teach York. And there goes Mitch Cooper around York on the low side. Well, how about that? Cooper painted York over to the left and pulled up on the high side. They're now running side by side, bumper to bumper and wheel to wheel as they charge off the fourth turn and down the straightaway. Cooper puts his foot all the way in the carburetor of his automobile, pulls by York and grabs the lead. Wow, what a battle! Please call me a cab right away. Thanks. What's wrong, Mr. Schaefer? We got the lead. 
I never saw Mitch drive like that. He's cutting out too quick. Bring him in, Stoogie. It's time for gas anyway. Now it begins to look like a battle between Cooper and York right down to the finish line. you do. Put the hood down. Put the damn hood down. There goes Mitch Cooper out of the pits and back into the race. Seemed to be some trouble down in the pits that time between Mitch Cooper and his crew chief, Buddy Schaefer. It's all straightened out now, though, and Mitch Cooper is back on the track running. What's wrong with the car, Mr. Schaefer? Tired iron, kid. Tired iron. That pit stop cost Cooper some laps, but he's pushing that number eight now to make up for lost time. Bobby Johns, the young Miami entry, is still running strong in car 72, as is Richard Petty in car number 43. And Joe Weatherly, the boy who always brings this huge crowd to the feet, is still very much in contention. Uh-oh, it looks as if York is getting ready to pit. back on even terms for the lead. Once again, it's the old pro battling with the people he taught to drive. The good stuff of York's now puts Cooper right back on even terms for the lead. Once again, it's the old pro battling with the people he taught to drive.
caution signals on, the caution car is on the track and the track is rapidly being cleared. The track is clear, the caution lights turn to green and they're ready to go again on the final two laps. I had the machine and Les York was the man to do it. This is what you wanted, so now you've got it. Curve right, scissors, please. Hi. Oh, hi. How do you do? Ouch! Take it easy, Doc. Everybody saw you do it, Mitch. Why? Well, it was my pleasure. Ah, the park. You won, huh? Yeah, I won, Mitch. Thanks. Thanks for a lot of things. <laughs> Forget it. You folks mind leaving now? Well, guess I got everything. Thanks. Be seeing you, Mitch. Good luck. You bet. Hey, uh... Maybe I'll see you up in Hillsboro next month. 150 laps, pretty big purse. Well, gee, Mitch, uh, I don't know. You said I was married to one of those indestructible iron men. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you will. I'll be seeing you. So long, iron man. Doesn't make much difference. <laughs>